multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. Other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. He was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? That's an amazing question to ask the Savior of the world. <laughs> do you not care that we're perishing? Perhaps you have not noticed we're all drowning. The boat is filling with water. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose, rebuked the wind, said to the sea, Peace be still. The wind ceased. There was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? It's kind of a strange story because uh, they went and woke God up. <laughs> and then they, they petitioned God. Asked God, Jesus Christ, to save them and to calm the storm. He did. He answered their petition which we call prayer and then after answering their prayer said how come you don't have any faith I don't know about you I was raised in an environment where you pray and God does stuff and that was called faith and here Jesus says how come you don't have any faith and they're thinking that I thought I did. I knew who to go to. <laughs> I knew who to wake up. You know, sometimes we pray in the place of obedience. And what happens frequently is people pr pray instead of radically obey. And then we can blame the outcome on God. Prayer is important, but it's never to substitute obedience. He said heal the sick. You know, sometimes, honestly, we spend all this time in prayer and don't understand why God didn't answer. And oftentimes it's because you're the answer and you're still. God saved my city. Go do something. Go release the kingdom. God, we want to see a transformed city. That's awesome. Get involved. Your salt, your light, your leaven. Get into the system. Watch the spirit of God in you affect the world around you. He put the spirit of the resurrected Christ, the exact power that entered the tomb, that entered the body, that raised him from the dead. He took that one and he caused him to take up residence inside of you. That's no small thing. Wait till you see the effect of righteousness in here. See, the Lord's trying to get us to learn this because we still have Old Testament paradigms that are tough to shift out of. We still, we still are way impressed with the size of the devil's work and the darkness in a city. And, uh, and we shouldn't be because he's very unimpressive. Now it's compared to the Lord. I'm not at all implying he has no power, but he's been cut off from his life source. He's been drying up for several thousand years. See, as long as the enemy causes us to tremble at his strategies, his plans, the power of wickedness and the power of sin, then we will just huddle together in buildings. We'll have meetings every night. And we hope that the world out there comes in to meet Jesus in here. When they should be nervous about you. That's right. One person in God is a majority. Yes. 